The Third Lip Guy. Series title, Apartment 106, written by Diana Russell. In 1998, a very comical film came out called A Night at the Roxbury. It starred an up-and-coming comedy actor, Will Ferrell, of Saturday Night Live. And Trixie was a big fan. She loved his comedy bits as the Spartan cheerleader on Saturday Night Live. As soon as the trailer came out, Trixie was dying to tell Bambi that there was a new movie that they had to see. Bambi was truly excited to hear about this film. A cast of Saturday Night Live players in one film? That was something new to the girls, and they planned a whole night to the city to watch it in theaters. Same routine as always. They saved money, called Grandma for babysitting, split gas... Sorry, split gas and planned a time. It was going to be a fun night of laughter and girl time. Same theater as Titanic, but without the three hour line. The girls ate at the food court, as they always do, and headed into the theater for some Will Ferrell comedy. It was such a great time. The girls laughed so hard, and the film got a standing ovation at the end. They can't stop nodding their heads sideways any time they hear the song What is Love by Hathaway. Just as Will and Chris Catan did in the film. That was a very popular song, so they did this a lot and laughed every time. It was another movie win for the girls. Bambi took her thoughts of this movie all the way to work with her the following Monday. There was no Google back in 1998. So Bambi had to ask around at clubs, about clubs in the big city, who would let 18-year-olds in. Bambi, 18. Trixie, 19. They never expected to drink alcohol, and they never entertained alcohol anyways. Bambi wanted to dance at a cool big city club, just like in the movies. She knew Trixie would be totally down. Bambi was okay with dancing to Paula Abdul's workout video. She was okay with the random spats of club dancing in Trixie's apartment, but Bambi had a big dream. She desired a big experience. Trixie had a huge collection of dance music CDs with the girls' new dance moves. They, they, oh God, I can't read. They learned from Paula Abdul. Bambi was on a mission. Bambi called everyone she knew who was familiar with big cities. Their classmate Olivia from high school knew a club that would let all in, although they were only 18 and 19. It was a fun club with bright colors and big dance floor, just like in the movies. This place even had a live DJ, and that was so exciting to a small town girl. Bambi collected all information and couldn't wait to call Trixie from work. Olivia got really excited about these plans as well and asked if she could come along. She knew how to get there and would help split gas money. Bambi knew Trixie wouldn't mind. Plans were made that afternoon. That very weekend, they were headed off to the dance their night away. Bambi spent the rest of her day with her head in the clouds, thinking about the incredible adventures with friends, fun, and dancing. She couldn't wait to get to Trixie's to tell her everything. Bambi had let Trixie in on the plans. Trixie was so excited and played nothing but 90s dance hits all week. Trixie was certain that her baby was going to grow up with to be a music professional because of all the dance music he listened to as he played in his playpen. The price of having a teen mom. Grandma was called, and babysitting was confirmed for an overnight. Trixie was all set. Now just a matter of the three teenagers finding the most perfect outfit. Coming from a small town, con <laughs> coming from a small conservative town, they were going to be very country looking. But they didn't realize this, nor would they have cared. This was going to be a total night of fun and adventure. Trixie was very sad. Because she was a single mom and didn't have any extra money to buy an outfit for the occasion. Trixie was a very loud and flashy person. She would have worn the most insane outfit if she could have afforded it. 
She's a t-shirt and jeans girl, but not by choice. Her whole wardrobe are clothes she's had for years. She had bills and a baby needed things. She spent an extra money. She spent any extra money on bigger clothes for her baby to fit into in the future and baby items like diapers and baby wipes. But she never complained. She was just appreciative that her mother was willing to support a fun night out with friends by keeping the baby overnight. Friday night rolls around. The girls already got the night off from the pizza shop and they just had to wait for Olivia to show up so they could take off to their night of clubbing and fun. Having about two hours to get ready, Bambi did her best to make Trixie look good by doing her makeup and hair. Round hairbrush not approved, of course. Trixie had, a re had really big breasts, so she wanted to accentuate her physical gift. Bambi was built nice in the hips and the waist and wanted to wear something tight to flatter her middle region and make her butt look sexy. An hour and a very messy bathroom later, Olivia shows up. Olivia didn't take the dress code that serious. She showed up in blue jeans, a nice top, and a dress sweater that was sewn into the top. She still looked very pretty, but very conservative as expected. Back then, nobody noticed. The three girls were still wet behind the ears. This was their first club experience, and they weren't old enough for a full experience anyways, since they couldn't drink. They wanted to experience something outside of their small town, a place where it's not family-friendly, a place where you don't fear running into your grandmother or your school teacher from first grade, a memory they could place their mark in and call their own. The girl stood at the door of Trixie's apartment and Bambi ran down the list. License? Cash? Keys? Bambi says. Check, Trixie and Olivia says. Boobs? Bambi says, laughing as all three girls grab their breasts. Check, they all say with laughter. Trixie locks her apartment door and the girls head out for their night of fun with friends, songs, night one and only. What is Love by Hadaway, the inspiration for the night. One hour travel to the city. The girls were having so much fun talking about high school memories and playing 90s dance songs without any real expectations. Their hearts were open and minds were spinning. This was very exciting for them. The most exciting thing they had experienced to this point were bonfires for the local football pep rallies. This was an adult adventure. They knew there would be much older and more experienced people at this club, and still, they looked forward to every moment. The girls finally arrived to the club. There were cars everywhere, people dressed up like fashion shows. Bambi takes notice of the beautiful women wearing a, a short skirt and high heels. Her hair was perfect, and her whole wardrobe was pink and sparkly, just like a scene from a movie. She looks directly back at Trixie and says, this is going to be awesome. Filled with excitement, the girls check one more time for their cash and driver's license. They were all set and headed inside. First club experience, they got a big black X on their hands for being underage for drinking. Bambi already felt outcasted, but she didn't let it bother her. She could hear the music and the people talking. She was already feeling like an adult. The girls were all cleared for entry. With their big black X on their hands, they walked into the club with confidence. It was a magical experience at first glance. The music blared loudly as it pumped into their souls. Their heads spin with the vision of slow motion dancing. Beautiful women whipping their hair around onto their dance partners as if they were the stars of a music video. The men had moves. They knew how to touch their lady dancers. It was poetic as the dance floor filled with people expressing their feelings through dance. The girls stood there with their jaws dropped as they stood motionless. They looked onto the dance floor in amazement and hoped that somebody would ask them to dance. They did the only thing they knew how to do, and it was the first, find a table to sit at. The first drink order was a deep discussion. Trixie's first stop was Mountain Dew. 
Olivia explained that this was an experience, that they were drinks that they could have that had no alcohol in it. At least they'd fit in more. The only non-alcoholic drink these three small-town girls knew of was a Shirley Temple. The drinks arrived, and the girls sat at their table with each other, drinking their Shirley Temples and watching the whole new world dance around them. They got up and danced together through a couple songs. They didn't realize it, but they were marking themselves as alcohol jailbait and out of place. No men were welcoming, and not surprisingly, what decent adult man wants to mess with teenagers? Until one man. After an hour or two of Shirley Temples later, I said that wrong, after an hour and two Shirley Temples later, a man in his 20s stood against the wall staring. He was wearing a white t-shirt, black dress slacks, had a leather jacket hanging over his shoulder by his hand. He was moving his body, showing interest in, in a dance with one of the girls. An older and more mature version of the girls would have just had fun and went and danced with them. But the girls were still so young and very out of place in this club. They start to talk amongst each other like high school girls do, and they start to talk trash about them. It didn't take long before the man finally approached the girls. He chooses Trixie. He asks her to dance, and she turns him down. His pickup line was, I notice you tapping your foot. Want to dance? Trixie politely turns him down. When she... Was she scared or just immature? Maybe both. The guy walked away defeated, and Trixie was not impressed. She looks at the girls and says, One guy asked to dance. All night, he chooses me, and he has three lips. The girls laugh. Rude, yes. But they were teenagers. Very immature. A Trixie in a few years would have just embraced the moment as an innocent fun dance and would have had fun dancing, and who is uh, now known as the third lipple guy. <laughs> third lip guy. I'm sorry, guys. The night came to a close. The girls had a fun time, but they came out of it with a whole different perspective. It was nothing like the night at the Roxbury for them. It may have been for the older crowd, but they were still teenagers with a lot of growing up to do. They marked this night off as a fun adventure among friends, but it was obvious they weren't ready for that life. They were still trying to figure out life on their own as a learning experience, an adventure. They knew that this club life would be their life one day. For now, they were just happy in each other's company. They were still very innocent and truly, life truly hadn't scared them yet. They were growing and they were growing together. At their tender age of 18, 19, they were excited to try the club experience, but they knew they needed a place more their speed. A place with the same club atmosphere, but with people their age. They were grown men at this club, and they, they still needed boys. One day, they would find all the components of the adult experience with the components of the youth they still live in. Small town girls need to coast into bigger things. They knew their rock star moment will come, just not yet.